Hello again, everybody. It's Mr. Scary Muffin, and this is another match from that June International Tournament that's been a couple weeks back now. Um, once again, I am bringing in my rain team. Uh, you are stuck with the same team the entire tournament, and uh, he, my opponent, is a Japanese player, and he's got the very, very scary-looking Smirgo Kangaskhan, the thing that uh, a lot of singles players were like, oh, this is the bane of VGC and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you guys, really, that it's not that big of a deal. It is The biggest thing about Smirgo is that he's entirely reliant on dice rolls. And it's it's just such a luck-based thing with Smirgle that because he's so inconsistent you can't really expect to do well in a tournament you can sure you can annoy some people all the way through um, the tournament but you're if you're gonna be if Smirgle is basically only gonna be useful 50% of the time then you might as well not bring him for 50% of the games and so he's you know the use of him is much restricted he's gonna throw a spiky shield in the beginning and he's going to actually fake out onto my Talon Flame here just to prevent me from doing uh, any solid amount of damage. It actually does a ridiculous amount of hurt to me. Uh, shows to me, well, he's got a lot of speed. I fake out into the Smirgo because I had to. Uh, and basically, I do nothing this turn except take a lot of damage. So really good turn for my opponent here. Even though it is easily predicted, I just had to do it anyways. The only way I could have stopped it with maybe a quick guard kind of thing. Uh, but I knew I need to get rid of the Kangaskhan fairly quickly, and I'm just going to do some damage to the Kangaskhan as quick as I can. And he actually reveals the frustration. It's very cute on his part. It's also faster than my Ludicolo, which is important to note that he might have some speed uh, investments as well. He also goes for the Dark Void, very obvious here. He'll actually, I think, alternate between Spiky Shield and Dark Void like the entire match. And uh, Spiky Shield, I think, is definitely m way more superior than King Shield on Smeargle, uh and uh, definitely de better than Protect as well. Uh, just because King Shield does not protect you against Taunt or uh, Will-O-Wisp and all that kind of stuff, but Spiky Shield will. So I bring all the Scrafty here, fairly important to uh, get this Intimidate off as well, and uh, give myself a chance to do some damage. He's going to retreat his Kangaskhan, actually and bring out a Town Flame, which is actually going to really, really be annoying. So throws out the Spiky Shield, as predicted. My Ludicol, unfortunately, is going to go through his sleep. That's the second sleep turn here. I threw the Crunch because I knew he might swap out here, and I thought that Crunch might be able to knock out his Kangaskhan. Ooh, excuse me there. Yeah, I thought the Crunch would be able to knock out the Kangaskhan, so I didn't need to use Drain Punch. I'm going to protect here, just in case he goes after the Scrafty. Uh, but he's going to break Bird against Ludicolo. And Ludicolo, even though uh, he's going to go down here, he does do some damage to the Talonflame just based on recoil. And I was actually expecting to do more damage to the Talonflame uh, through recoil, but I think he actually has HP investments here. And he's going to heal up with Shell Bell. I'm like, seriously? Who uses Shell Bell? Gets off the Dark Void, but I protect it, so I'm immune to it this turn. Uh, he drops his accuracy, which is going to be a big difference to me, I think. I bring out the Kangaskhan now and threaten the Fake Out on the first turn, so he is going to retreat. Of course, I don't run Fake Out on my Kangaskhan, but it's nice to have the threat there. And I know at this point, with two Pokemons down, I need to make my Kangaskhan as intimidating as possible, and I need those Power Up Punch to put him into uh, a good attack range. He's going to throw up the Spiky Shield again. And I'm going to protect. I actually went for the double protect here because I thought that Brave Bird might be coming into me. And I really needed to knock out that Talon Flame. Uh, but he did swap out here. I still do a lot of damage regardless, which is nice. But it does put my Scrafty uh, within range of being knocked out by a Brave Bird still. But I got that double protect unnecessarily. He's going to get his Dark Void off this time, uh, moving first. And Scrafty avoided attack. That's not what I wanted. I needed Kangaskhan to avoid attack because Scrafty's got Lumberry, so he would have been fine. He throws out the U turn. I think I went for a return this time because I would have knocked out the Zapdos or knocked out the Talonflame, regardless of what he did. Or even the uh, opposing Kangaskhan, so a return would have been really good rather than a Sucker Punch or a Power Up Punch. My Kangaskhan, unfortunately, asleep. Not going to get an attack, but the Crunch comes out. And he definitely has HP investments because he is staying up. So once again, I go for the Protect here. 
um, just to avoid the the Dark Void and the Brave Bird, and buying basically Kangaskhan as much time as possible to wake up. Um, I think I'm going to go through all three guaranteed sleep rounds here, maybe. Dark Void, I'm already asleep. Oh no, I do wake up, perfect! And I get a Power Up Punch off as well, which is great. I went for the Talonflame though, because I thought I would be able to chip it out, did not expect the Roost. So unfortunately did not get the knockout here, but I do get my attack up, which is going to be really handy. Moody rolls generally not going in uh, Smeargle's favor, but he is still on the field. I think if I was him, I would have swapped it out a long time ago. Finally goes for the Brave Bird, and Scrafty is going to go down without even revealing the Lumberry, which is really unfortunate. And he actually dies from the recoil damage, recoil damage rather, and which means that I actually have to go and attack into the spiky shield, which is not what I wanted, but whatever. Things like that happen. His evasiveness goes up here, which actually will make a difference later on, as you'll see. Brings out the Kangaskhan again. I have to protect, revealing my protect for the first time, just to avoid the fake out round here. And he does go for that fake out. He also goes for the Dark Void. So I'm fine here. Now, here, I knew that I might need to get this attack off here. He Sucker Punches into me. Uh, does okay damage. Not really. Um, I'm fairly bulky. My Kangaskhan is a fairly bulky spread. And I tried to Power Up Punch to knock out the uh, Smeargle this turn because I thought he would try to go for the Dark Void. But I actually miss, and that is huge on his part. That stupid evasion boost. Uh, but I, of course, I also avoid the Dark Void because he has two minus accuracies. Uh, I go for the Sucker Punch this time to take out the Kangaskhan. And luckily, I, I basically rolled some dice there just to see whether I'm faster, but I was fairly confident that I was faster than his Kangaskhan. So I get the knockout on him. And out comes the Zapdos, and I uh, knew he was going to go for the... Dark Void again this turn, so I'm just going to protect here just to see if the Zapdos has anything fancy like uh, maybe a substitute or some other kind of thing, but he w straight up went for the Thunder, so I knew he was going to attack next turn so I could Sucker Punch him and deal with the Smeargle 1v1, and if the Smeargle is like most Smeargles without any attacking moves, I should be fine. So I'm going to throw the Sucker Punch out here and knock out the Zapdos, and I'm in a fairly good position now to win this out against the Smeargle. Provided the Smeargle doesn't have any attacking moves, of course. Go for the Power Punch, but I miss again! Oh, it hurts so much! I would definitely get the knockout with this. Instead, he is going to Dark Void me, and I'm going to go to sleep. Yay! So, guaranteed one turn of, a sle of sleep right now, and uh, let's see what he does with it. Of course, none of these boosts matters again, so this is guaranteed sleep. And he actually reveals the Leech Seed, and oh my goodness, I apologize ahead of time because this is going to be a frustrating scene to watch ahead of... This is going to be terrible. He's going to drain my health and get his Moody Boost. I really need his Evasion to drop. His Accuracy goes down, which is fine. I wake up, one turn sleep, lucky me, but he avoids the Power Punch anyways, and he throws up the Substitute. I'm like, what? Substitute? You know Focus Sash, bro? And this is just like a nightmare now waiting to happen. There's nothing I can do. He's going to spiky shield. And... Oh god, it's terrible. Terrible to watch here. I, I gotta go for the Protect here. Because um, he's probably going to spiky shield or whatever. I actually this I shouldn't have Protected here. Because uh, his he could actually spiky shield the next turn now. And I realized that. Uh, because his spiky shield failed this turn. But, oh my goodness, it is so frustrating to watch. He, um, yeah, so he does use the Spiky Shield. That was a misplay by me. I definitely shouldn't have gone for the Spiky Shield. I should have gone for something like a Sucker Punch, because uh, I knew he would have been doing that. And unfortunately, I take the damage here, and I think that's going to be game. Oh, terrible! But really, I missed three attacks onto that Smeargle. And you can see that playing Smeargle is very risky, because... Those rolls uh, for my attack against that Smeargle were hella in my favor. I think easily 
Uh, every single one of them was 70% or higher. So the likelihood of this miracle actually dodging me was actually very slim, but he managed to get all three dodges that he needed and win out. He had his availability to win out. And the weirdest loadout for him too, to have um, Substitute and Leech Seed there on his uh, Smeargle. But you can see that using Smeargle was not very, very reliable. And I had many, many opportunities for me to win. And it's basically, I didn't even misplay. I just... Um, I just basically missed the attack and it's just dice rolls did not go in my favor. And that's probably the main reason why a lot of people don't want to use Smeargo in the higher echelon of Pokemon play is just because it's too luck dependent and you can't rely on it. And when you have something that you can't rely on, you don't use it. It's the same reason why some people decide not to use Fire Blast, but Fire Blast is actually fairly accurate. But for example, if some people don't like to use Hydro Pump, like I don't use Hydro Pump on my Ludicolo, instead I choose to use Skull because Skull is much more accurate versus Hydro Pump's 80%, which will always miss when you don't want it to miss. Anyways, frustrating battle, I know, but I knew I could have won this one, so I don't really blame Smeargo, I just blame luck in general and things not going in my favor. Um, stay tuned, guys. I think I got one more game for you from the June International, so it'll be up on my channel in a couple of days. Until then, see you later. Take care.